Hello everyone, I hope you are doing fine. So in this video, the first thing I would like to ensure is that I sincerely apologize for not uploading or showing off any content in our channel for the past one month. And these were all due to various numb reasons which should be neglected but anyways we are here so I would ensure myself to upload videos with a better consistency. Alright and now let's ensure we make a positive progress under the topic of mathematics. And you would be well aware that we had already covered two problems under the topic of mathematics. And now we will move on to the third question. So in this question, we are given a task to tell whether the number given is pure or not. A pure number is a number whose sum of digits is a multiple of 3. So a similar test case is provided and as the sum of the digits of 13 is 4 and clearly it is not divisible by 3. Therefore we print the word not which would better remark the sum of the digits of the given integer value is in a multiple of 3. I hope the question is clear and let's move to the coding part. So to start with, we declare a as an input variable of data type string in order to add the respective digits which would be easier in the form of a character. And further, we declare r is equal to 0 where r stands for the increment operation with respect to the digits present and are repeatedly iterated using a for loop. Therefore, we could conclude that the value of the sum of digits is ultimately stored in the variable r. The, the only remaining statement is the output statement. And if the variable r is divisible by 3 or written 0 using the modulo operator against 3, we return s, else we print no. And thus we would summon the code and wait for the test cases to pass and let's move to the next question. In the fourth question, we are provided with a set of numbers and from those numbers, we have to choose a finest number. If there are more than one finest number, then we would sort it in an ascending order and print them in the same line separated by spaces. And if there are no finest numbers, we are required to print minus one. Well, here you could arise a question about what is a finest number and how could we even find a finest number. We could find a finest number by testing any natural number with the given formula and if any of the natural number formulates in order to give the value present in the given array, we presume that is the finest number. I hope it's clear and let's proceed into the coding part. As we usually do, we declare a as an integer variable to obtain the input of the first line and we declare array as an list which stores the integer variables which is followed in the second line. Here, we would declare two other variables in order to store the finest number and to formulate the same. We declare for loop to pick up the first numerical value present in the array and we check if any natural numbers which is processed through the given formula equals the number provider. And if it does, we store it under the variable list. Else, we simply pass through and proceed with the next numerical value. And finally, as it has been specified in the question, we sort the list containing the values of the finest numbers in an ascending order and we print it using the asterisk operation separated by spaces. Thus, we would be able to pass all the test cases with this code and when we are done with it, we would proceed to the next question. Finally, now we have reached the fifth question under the topic of mathematics. So in this question, we are given a number n and we have to tell whether that number is great or not. How could we determine whether it's great? Add the sum of the digits present in the numerical value and the product of the same. While these two are summed together, they should return the same number itself. That's why I presume that it's a great number. Now let's dive right into the code. As specified, we declare n as an input variable of data type integer. Usually, while it comes to the part where we separate the digits in the numerical value, we would initialize the input variable as of the string data type. But here, we had declared n under the data type integer. So let's test if there is an other alternative instead of playing around with characters as an integer. So in the second step, we declare a value t equal to the given integer n. We do so because we completely disintegrate the variable n using a while loop and find out the product and sum which are required for the questions to check if the given number is great. And that's the reason why we declare a variable with the given input. And we declare three other variables in order to serve various purposes. For example, we declare d is equal to 1 in order to get each value of the digit from the one place with respect to each iteration of either the while loop or the for loop which we will be using further. We declare or in order to sum up the values of the digits given in the numerical input. 
and finally we declare p as 1 in order to find the product of the different digits present in the given input. So after the completion of the declaration part, let us go to the iteration part. Here as I previously mentioned, we would completely disintegrate the value of n in order to do so. We declare a while loop where we check if the value of n is greater than 0. Thus, if the value of n remains above 0, the while loop would continue with its progressive iterations. Alright, now let's segregate the digits present in the numerical value. We use the variable d in order to segregate each digit present in the given integer. For example, here the value is 59. And in the first iteration, the value of d maps to the variable 9 here where it starts from the 1's place and proceeds up to other progressive states. We achieve this by using the modulo operator against the given input and the number 10. In the next step, we add the consecutive digits under the value of r. As you know, the function of the variable r is to store the sum of the digit which would be used in the formula part. In the next step, we declare a floor division operator in the variable n. Therefore, we would proceed to the next digit under the progression. At last, we wouldn't forget to find the product of the digits using the variable p and we do so by multiplying each variable that is each value of d with the variable p as we did so under the variable r. Till now, we have formulated all the required variables in order to apply in the formula. Formula to find whether a numerical value is great is to add both the sum of the digits and the product of the digits which we have found above as r and p. Therefore, we add these two variables and check again the given input that we had declared as t. If the formula a equals the value of t, then we would print great, else we would print no. Thus, we run the code as expected all test cases has been passed. Now, let's solve a final question which one of our subscribers had posted me earlier. That is, we have given the numerous input values as the height of the wall and we have to calculate total unit of air encapsulator between the walls of the chamber. In this sample input, we have been provided with three walls where the height ranges between 7, 4 and 9. So let's mark the air encapsulator or present in these areas. They had question to print the total unit of air encapsulator between the walls of all the chambers. We know that air is everywhere and it fills each and every part of the corner. And here what they have told us sir, we have to print the unit of air which is present over all the common part of the intervals between these walls. Here that value is 3 as the upper height of the wall is 9 and the second lowest height of the wall is 7. Thus wall of height 4 separates the consecutive gap. So we have to print the value of the minimum part equally shared by all the walls present in the given condition. And let's move further to the coding part. So we declare a variable numbers in order to get the input of the integer value. The array elements should indicate the height of the walls. And we obtain those values using a variable called numlist using a list function. And we declare a lower value of the R for the time being as the first variable of the given number of the obtained list. This value of the lower wall is not certain and fixed. So we check it with other array elements. But to begin with, we check if the last element of the array is lesser than the first wall present in the given array elements. But in this test case, we could clearly predict that the number 9 is greater than 7. Therefore, we pass the test case and we declare the output variable that is the air encapsulator inside the chamber and we declare the variable as 0. We would not leave it as such certainly, we would increment the value using a for loop where we would continue to subtract the height of the lower walls from the fixed chamber. Therefore, we use a if condition in order to serve the similar purpose. And after we had incremented the common space where the air is encapsulated or is present everywhere in the chamber, we print the final output. Thanks for spending your time with me and I hope this video helps at least of some of you understanding the concepts and solving the program. And if you have some big queries and require detailed explanations, please don't hesitate to post it in the contact mail which I have attached in the description associated with all the codes for this question available. And if you are new here, please subscribe and we will meet soon in the next video.